Bill Clinton said, and we should, every community in the country could then start doing major weapon sweeps and then destroying the weapons, not selling them. And I misspelled his name on purpose to give it the Soviet flavor, okay? <laughs> Did you know in the first 12 months after gun owners in Australia were forced to surrender 640,000 guns to the government, they destroyed them. The program cost the government $500 million. Well, after that happened, in the first 12 months, homicides nationwide were up 3.2%. Assaults went up 8.6%. Armed robberies went up 44%. In the state of Victoria, homicides with firearms are up 300%. Figures over the previous 25 years show a steady decrease in armed robbery with firearms. There's also been a dramatic increase in break-ins and assaults of the elderly. Hmm. In 1911, Turkey established gun control. Later, 1.5 million Armenians, unable to defend themselves, were slaughtered. In 1929, the Soviet Union established gun control, and for the next 30 years, 20 million dissidents, unable to defend themselves, were rounded up and slaughtered. 1938, Nazi gun control said Jews are prohibited from carrying firearms and ammunition. They established gun control in 1938, and for the next six years, at least 13 million Jews and others were rounded up and exterminated because they were unable to defend themselves. Okay? China established gun control in 1935, and for the next 10 years, 20 million political dissidents, unable to defend themselves, were exterminated. Guatemala established gun control in 1964. In the next 15 years, 100,000 Mayan Indians, unable to defend themselves, were exterminated, killed, murdered. Uganda established gun control in 1970. For the next eight years, 300,000 Christians were murdered because they were unable to defend themselves. Cambodia established gun control in 1956, and from 75 to 77, one million educated people, maybe more, unable to defend themselves, rounded up and exterminated. Defenseless people around the country, around the world, exterminated in the 20th century about 56 million. Next time someone talks in favor of gun control, ask them, who do you want to round up and exterminate? See, with guns we are citizens, without guns we are subjects. Well said, Mr. Bracken. In 1982, the town of Kennesaw, Georgia, passed a law requiring all able adults, except convicts or conscientious objectors, to have a gun. You had to have a gun in Kennesaw, Georgia. They've had only one murder from an out-of-state out criminal with a gun and have had no increase in crime or violence in 12 years. I mean, if you're a criminal, you're going to go to a place like that? One of the major chains like AutoZone, it wasn't AutoZone, but one of the major auto parts chains, the government, their, their leader said, we're going to have a rule, no guns allowed in our stores. So they sent out a memo, everybody post a note on your store, no guns allowed. What does that say to a criminal? Rob me. <laughs> Isn't that what it says? Do you think that criminal's going to obey your sign? I can see it now. He's standing there holding the gun on the counter, on the guy behind the counter. The guy says, hey, can't you read that sign out there? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> the plan is very simple. You create a crisis, like blow up the Reichstag like Hitler did, or blow up the Muir building like our government did, to get people to accept your solution, which is more anti-terrorist laws and gun control. And if you think Timothy McVeigh blew up the Oklahoma City building, you are really duped. Okay? A long story behind that. The communist definition of peace is the absence of resistance. Now, communist is based on evolution. The idea that man can be God. Karl Marx talked about evolution all through his speeches. He kept talking about historical evolution is on your side. At a very early age, while still a pupil at the ecclesiastical school, a Christian school, Comrade Stalin developed a critical mind and revolutionary sentiments. He began to read Darwin and became an atheist. You know, Joseph Stalin went to a Christian school and Darwin's book turned him away from God. That's the book that influenced Joseph Stalin. Now, my daughter-in-law is from the Ukraine. Joseph Stalin intentionally killed 10 million people in the Ukraine. I've been there and preached over there, folks. It is a poverty-stricken country. 
That's the breadbasket of that whole area. I mean, they can grow more food than they could ever possibly eat. Communism has destroyed that place. Joseph Stalin, it's estimated that he killed between 60 and 100 million of his own people during his reign of terror. Nobody knows for sure. You ought to read some of the books by Alexander Solzhenitsyn. If you can read a 900-page Russian book. I, I, somebody gave me one of these big books, you know, the Ar, uh, Gulag Archipelago. I said, oh, Hovind, you've got to read this. I said, yeah, right, man, that thing's 12 feet thick. He said, okay, just read the first 10 pages. I said, all right, I'll read 10 pages. For the next three days, I couldn't put it down. I was up day and night reading that whole book. I couldn't believe This guy lived through Joseph Stalin's concentration camp. How many of you have ever read any of those books by Alexander's old? You know what I'm talking about, man. You just, you can't quit. Just get one and read it, okay? You know, during World War II, Poland was attacked from both sides. Russia hit them from one side, and Germany hit them from the other side. And the Polish army put up a ferocious resistance, but they were absolutely, hopelessly outnumbered, and they collapsed. Well, pretty soon they divided Poland up. Russia gets part, Germany gets part, and Russia had a bunch of prisoners. In 1992, the Russians finally admitted what happened to all the prisoners they took. They took 14,700 officers from the Polish army, tied their hands behind their back, and then jerked them up as hard as they could and wrapped the rope around their neck. But first they put a hood over their neck, over their head. Put a hood on their head, put the rope around the hood. Put them into railroad cars and took them out to the Katyn forest and shot them in the back of the head. These are prisoners of war. You know what happened to the Geneva Convention? Mm -hmm. 14,700 officers were murdered in cold blood. That's just in one forest. Why did they do this? Well, Joseph Stalin signed the order, and he said, well, these are Poles. They are inferior species. They haven't evolved as far as the Russians. I'm telling you, when a person starts believing in evolution, it might lead to this logical conclusion that, hey, maybe one race is superior to the others. Paul Pott, the communist dictator, was a strong believer in evolution. He executed about three million of his own people. He was the leader of the Khmer Rouge, and they're still causing trouble over there today, folks, setting landmines all over that country to blow up little kids as they walk to school. Well, how can you do that? Well, Paul Pott believed in evolution. He thought, you know, certain people are inferior. When the communists took over China, with American help, by the way, the communists killed about 60 million of their own people. 15,000 Christians a month were murdered. And during this time, the church in China grew like crazy. And did you know Chinese Christians are praying for persecution to come to America because it'll strengthen the church? They're worried the American church is weak. You need some persecution. That's what they're praying for. I just don't know if I want God to hear that prayer or not. See, when man thinks he's God, Satan deceives him into believing there is, that he is God, you know. And communists have rejected God's authority and tried to put man in his place. Evolution is also the foundation for the Nazi movement. Adolf Hitler was a strong believer in evolution. Hitler's rise to power was financed by the Federal Reserve. We helped Hitler come to power over there. Dictator in Italy, Mussolini, was a strong believer in evolution. He thought the Italians were the superior species. Mussolini and Hitler, of course, in World War II were allies for quite a while. Hitler thought the Germans were the superior race. And we covered on our video number four how that he had his list about that, you know, the Germans had evolved farther. A direct line runs from Darwin through the father of eugenics movement, Darwin's cousin, Francis Galton, to the extermination camps of Nazi Europe. New Scientist magazine. Huh. Hitler's book, Mein Kampf, a fascinating reading. I've only read about half of it. It just makes me boil as I read this. How can anybody be so dumb as to believe this stuff? But Hitler thought the Germans were the superior race. And we covered earlier how the, you know, the Olympics were held in Germany in 1936, and the black man, Jesse Owens, beat the Germans. And Hitler was angry about it. He thought the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Norwegians were the superior race, and he thought the Jews were an inferior race. Hitler killed the Jews because of his belief in evolution. One of the guys who survived Hitler's camps, a Jewish doctor, said there is a difference between those who look upon their fellow human beings as common creatures of a common creator 
and those who look upon them as a conglomerate of biologicals and chemicals. You know, the Jewish Talmud, which is not the Old Testament, okay, that's the Torah. The Talmud says, teaches that non-Jews should be exterminated. According to the book uh, Yiboth, or however you pronounce that, 98a, says all Gentile children are animals. This uh, Rule 10 says even the best of the Gentiles should all be killed. If you want more on the Talmud, get a hold of... Uh, Michael Hoffman in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, hoffman-info.com, and see how dangerous that religion is. Now somebody says, Hovind, are you anti-Semite? I don't even know what a Semite is. I'm pro-Israel. I think America should support Israel. I believe in Genesis chapter 12, those that bless you, will, you know, you'll be blessed. And we ought to support Israel. I'm not sure who these Semites are, but man, I think we ought, definitely ought to support Israel. Okay? I've been to the Hitler concentration camps. I've preached in Germany three times. You know, during World War II, there was a Polish salesman working for the IG Farben Chemical Company. They, he sold cyanide, Zyklon B, and Malathion to the Nazis to help exterminate the Jews at Auschwitz. After the war, he thought, wow, I'm a war criminal, they're going to come after me. He feared for his life, so he joined the Catholic Church and became a priest. He hid in a convent for a while, or monastery, till things calmed down. Uh, at age, uh, at 1958, he was ordained as Poland's youngest bishop. Thirty days later, the reigning pope was assassinated and he became Pope John Paul II. Ooh. And by the way, the guy that wrote this book, Milton Cooper, was assassinated two months ago. But all you got to do is type in cyanide and pope on a website and you'll get all sorts of documentation. This is exactly what happened, folks. Just better study that out, okay? What Hitler did to the Jews is because of his belief in evolution. And I wouldn't be loyal to any church just because mama went there, okay? I was raised Lutheran and Methodist and Mennonite, went to the Catholic church, never joined. But folks, I'm going to stand for truth and what God's word said, regardless of what anybody else thinks. And some of you better have the backbone to do the same. And if you're a Catholic, God loves you, okay? But you, you ought to get out of that mess. You better really study what you're in and get out of it, okay? Trust me. Hitler killed the Jews, though, because he thought they were an inferior species. And you're not going to understand World War II until you understand how evolution ties in. And we could talk a long time on this. I stood right there where Hitler made this speech a couple of years ago when I was over there in Nuremberg, Germany. Hitler had these massive rallies. He wanted the people to feel small and the cause to seem great. It was done intentionally. As I walked on these uh, blocks of stone there, I realized these blocks of stone were cut at the concentration camp I had just come from a few hours earlier, where thousands of Jews died cutting this granite so Hitler could walk on it. Cutting and polishing granite stones. You know, the mentality of the environmental movement is the same today. They want the kids to feel small and the cause of saving the earth to feel great. Same mentality Hitler used. Hitler knew you have to reach the young people. I've had many people come to me and say, Brother Hovind, I was in Hitler's youth in Germany. And you are right. They bombarded us with evolution teaching in Hitler's youth corps. Ask anybody, if, I don't, maybe there's somebody here that was in Hitler's youth corps in Germany. They'll tell you that's what they taught them was evolution. Hitler kept calling the Jews a parasite in the body of nations. Same thing about the abortion issue, which we covered on video number four. Hitler said, this new state will give its youth to no one, but will instead take youth and give to youth its own education and its own upbringing. Your child belongs to us already. What are you? There was a man in Skokie, Illinois, that shot and killed a doctor. The police caught him. said, why did you kill that doctor? Here's what the man said. He told the authorities he chose a plastic surgeon from the phone book and killed him. Because they, the hairdressers and people who make blue-tinted contact lenses, are diluting the Aryan beauty. Folks, the Nazi movement is alive and well today, <laughs> including in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Am I right? Robin, do you get into any of this stuff? Okay. Hitler wanted to think, though, he wanted to hide behind the cross. There's a great book by Marvin Lutzer, president of Moody Bible Institute, about how Hitler tried to, he deceived the Christians. The Christians didn't oppose Hitler for the longest time. 
unable to defend themselves, were slaughtered. In 1929, the Soviet Union established gun control, and for the next 30 years, 20 million dissidents, unable to defend themselves, were rounded up and slaughtered. 1938, Nazi gun control said Jews are prohibited from carrying firearms and ammunition. They established gun control in 1938, and for the next six years, at least 13 Bill Clinton said, and we should. Every community in the country could then start doing major weapon sweeps and then destroying the weapons, not selling them. And I misspelled his name on purpose to give it the Soviet flavor, okay? Did you know in the first 12 months after gun owners in Australia were forced to surrender 640,000 guns to the government, they destroyed them. The program cost the government $500 million. Well, after that happened, in the first 12 months, homicides, nation for the next eight years, 300,000 Christians were murdered because they were unable to defend themselves. Cambodia established gun control in 1956, and from 75 to 77, one million educated people maybe more, unable to defend themselves, rounded up and exterminated. Defenseless people around the country, around the world, exterminated in the 20th century about 56 million. 15 million Jews and others were rounded up and exterminated because they were unable to defend themselves, okay? China established gun control in 1935, and for the next 10 years, 20 million political dissidents, unable to defend themselves, were exterminated. Guatemala established gun control in 1964. In the next 15 years, 100,000 Mayan Indians, unable to defend themselves, were exterminated, killed, murdered. Uganda established gun control in 1970. Nationwide were up 3.2%. Assaults went up 8.6%. Armed robberies went up 44%. In the state of Victoria, homicides with firearms are up 300%. Figures over the previous 25 years show a steady decrease in armed robbery with firearms. There's also been a dramatic increase in break-ins and assaults of the elderly. Hmm. In 1911, Turkey established gun control. Later, one and a half million Armenians 